There's a lot of confusion about how you go about buying properties with bad credit and no money. And that is understandable because if everybody in your life has always used money or credit to buy properties, then yeah, you're gonna think, I need credit, I need money, that's how I buy properties. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you a couple of strategies that's going to show you how to buy properties without your own money and without your own credit. Hey guys, welcome to The Hone Zone where we help you multiply the assets you own. I'm Hone Tai and I've been investing for the last 10 years. And what I did in order to invest in so many properties is learn how to use other people's money. There would be nothing to teach you guys if you had a million bazillion dollars and you used that to go buy properties. Like there's nothing to teach there. But there's, a plenty, there's plenty to teach if you don't have any money and you have bad credit to buy properties. Like, how do you do that? Is that even possible? Of course, of course it is because I've helped a lot of people do it and I've done it myself. So today, let's talk about it. First off, let, let's make a distinction, okay? That distinction is you don't need to use your money but you do need to use money, okay? So that's a huge distinction that I want you guys to have. It does require money, it just doesn't have to be yours. And let's clear one other thing up. Why are we even doing this? Why are we buying more properties? Because every single property you guys buy means you have a higher net worth and hopefully you increase your passive income. That almost doesn't need to be said, but I say almost because a lot of people look at buying an investment property almost the same way as they look at buying anything else like a car or going on vacation they kind of blend the two where they're afraid of going into debt to buy a rental property the same way they're afraid of going to debt to buy a car because they've done that in the past they bought a car that car was cool to drive but it ate them alive in terms of monthly payments so now anytime they look at debt, they go oh i don't want to do that but with a house that you're buying or an apartment building or anything that generates income, that's the key, it generates income. And when you're using other people's money to buy that asset that generates income, you are acquiring debt, you're using debt. That other people's money thing, that OPM thing, that is debt, you're using debt which is good debt to buy the asset. And then that asset is producing a cash flow for you. And hopefully you do it right where the cash flow is higher than the payment you owe to your lender. All right, we don't have any more time to waste, so let's get into the meat and potatoes. So here we have a seller. The seller is wanting to sell their house for $100,000. Fantastic. You've done your analysis, you've done your comps, you realize that this house is actually worth $150,000. This person wants to sell for $100,000. Why? Why would they sell it for $100,000? You'd be surprised how often this actually happens. The thing is, maybe this person doesn't realize that it's worth $150,000. Maybe they like you. Maybe they're just looking to price it to move. Like they're, they're pricing it low so it sells quickly. Maybe they're selling it for $100,000 as is because they know that the house needs a little bit of work. Why they're selling it for $100,000? It's not that important. What's really important is the fact that they are selling it for $100,000 and it's worth 150. The fact that you're getting a discount. So that's rule number one that I told, I've told you guys time and time again, rule number one, always buy at a discount. Now, this house is selling for $100,000. That doesn't explain how we're gonna go about buying this with other people's money if you have bad credit, if you have no money. So what do we do, right? What do we do? The first question I might ask them is, hey, do you have a mortgage? Do you have a mortgage in place? Do you owe the bank any money? And a lot of times the answer is yes. Majority of people who own houses have a mortgage. So this person might have a mortgage for, let's say, $80,000, right? Let's, let's go with that. They have a mortgage for $80,000. So I ask them, hey, how much do you pay on that mortgage? How much is it every single month? They might say something like, oh, it's $500 a month. Okay, great. How quickly do you actually wanna sell? right? They might go, oh, I want to get rid of this thing as soon as possible. I go, fantastic. Well, what I can do is I can buy this property really quick, as fast as you want, and I will buy it as is, leave all the problems, I'll handle them. If you allow me to make the monthly payments, this is what we call subject to. So it's subject to the existing mortgage. The existing mortgage is $80,000. The monthly payment's $500 per month. I am going to be responsible for paying that $500 a month and the seller is going to leave that mortgage in place. Now, if they sold it to me for cash, let's say I brought cash to the table, I brought 100 grand, the seller is going to walk away 
with $20,000 because they would have to pay off their existing mortgage. In this case, what's gonna happen is I'm only gonna have to bring $20,000 instead of $100,000 because they're leaving the 80,000 in place. If you need to rewind, rewind, listen to that again, okay? So they're gonna be leaving the $80,000 in place. They're not paying that off. I'm bringing the $20,000 that they were always gonna walk away with. I'm gonna bring the $20,000, they're gonna get that. And now I'm gonna be responsible for paying that $500 a month, right? Maybe this is a situation where they inherited the property. Maybe the person who owned the property passed away. They inherited the property. The property has a mortgage in place. And not to be funny, but the person who passed away, they don't care for what their credit looks like anymore, right? So this mortgage doesn't matter. It This, this mortgage is irrelevant. But if I continue to pay the monthly payments to the bank, then the bank is gonna most likely leave it alone. Now, they could do what's called a due on sale clause. And what that means is that it the mortgage is due the moment they find out that the house has been sold. So they call it due. So that's the due on sale clause. This could happen, but most likely it won't happen because I'm making the monthly payments. How do banks make money? interest payments, right? And as long as I'm banking the payments and not paying off the loan, they're continuing to make money. So if I pay them, then most likely, most likely, they're not going to call the note due, the loan due. So now let's get deeper into it. So, so far, we have taken the property over subject to the existing mortgage of $80,000. That's $500 a month that I have to pay. And then I said to you guys that the seller is gonna get $20,000, but hone, I thought you said no money or other people's money. Where is that $20,000 coming from? Well, it can actually come from a number of places. So first place that it can come from is from the seller themselves. So instead of actually bringing $20,000 to the table, what could happen is I tell the seller, hey, what are you gonna do with that money? What are you gonna do with that $20,000? They're like, I don't know, I don't need it. It's just gonna sit there. I, and I asked them, well, would you like that money to grow? Would you like to invest that money? They go, tell me more, what do you mean? What about if instead of me giving you $20,000, what if I give you a monthly income stream and you make some interest on your money? So essentially, the seller is lending me $20,000 that I owe them, they're lending it to me, right? And I'm using that to pay them back, but instead of giving me $20,000 and me giving it right back to them, nothing happens. All that happens now is I owe them monthly interest payments. Just like this $500 a month, I might owe them, say, $200 a month, just making it up, right? So then in total, I owe $700 a month. So now I owe $700 a month for this property that's worth $150, and I didn't bring any money to the table because $80,000 came from the existing mortgage and $20,000 came from the seller. So look at that no money. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? And then when people are like, home, but what about your credit? What about my credit? Did this seller check my credit at all? Maybe not, right? Maybe not. And that's the really cool thing. People have this thing though. They always like to say, but what if, what if, what if? They're like, home, but what if they don't do this? What if they say no? Well, if they say no, then what's your plan B? But what if they say yes? That's what's really cool. So if you learn a strategy like this and they say yes, you've just multiplied the assets you own. You just got yourself another deal. And if you get another deal, great. You get richer as we spoke about earlier. Let's keep on going with the example. So now, what are we doing with this property? We're renting it out. That's how we make our money, guys. We buy rental properties, we rent them out, we get the cash flow. The tenant is gonna pay $1,500 a month to live here. Now, we also incur an expense of $300 a month. What is that $300 a month for? Maybe it's for taxes, maybe it's insurance, maybe it's maintenance, it's maybe it's utilities, it's like that. So I just lumped it together, let's call it $300 a month just for this example. So we got $1,500 coming in, minus the $500 that we're paying towards the mortgage, minus the $200 that we're giving to the seller for seller financing, the $20,000, minus the $300 that were our expenses. What's left? $500 a month, guys, that's 500 extra dollars per month from a property where you had no money in the deal, where you use other people's money, you got the bank's money, you got the seller's money to buy this property. It makes you an extra $500 a month. It's worth $50,000 more than you owe on it, 
because it's worth 150 you bought it for 100 like you guys see how powerful this is this is just off of one property if you had 10 of these that would be five thousand dollars a month extra on top of what you already have and if you also watch my other video on how properties go up in value like today it's worth 150 this property might be worth who knows five hundred thousand dollars in the future so it goes up in value and you get this cash flow and here's the cool thing the cash flow typically goes up that rent goes up and up and up it keeps up with inflation they call it inflation adjusted right it's cool where this, you don't have to work any harder. This is the part I, w I really want you guys to understand. You don't have to work harder to get paid more. You simply own the assets and the money just keep coming in. With that example, I showed you guys subject to and seller finance. And I think that's enough for you guys to chew on right now. I want you guys to really understand that and explore that. Some of the other things that you might want to look into is like if the seller said, you know, I would love to seller finance you the $20,000, but I need the money now. How do you give him the $20,000? Well, maybe you get it from a line of credit. Maybe you get it from a private money lender. Maybe you get it from a credit card. There's a lot of different places where you can get that extra $20,000 from. And again, it doesn't have to come from your pocket. You can still use other people's money to pay the, the seller the $20,000. And then whoever you borrow the money from, they now get the $200 a month. There are a lot of people who are excited for that cash flow because for them, that's completely passive. That's completely passive income. And they're having their money work hard for them. Right, so you pay them the $200 a month, the seller gets his $20,000, you're paying the mortgage that exists, everybody's happy. The coolest part is that there are many, many more strategies that you can implement in order to buy properties without your own money. So if you're interested in learning how to buy more properties to multiply the assets you own without having to use your own money, check out my newest program. If you guys wanna talk about that, email me, hone at honezone.com, I've created the Rental Property Multiplier Academy. It's a new program to help you multiply the assets that you own. If you guys see the power in what I just showed you, then you should be super excited about joining the program so that you guys can benefit directly, not just have the knowledge of how to do it, but to actually do it, actually apply it to your life so that you get wealthier, so you create passive income, so that you live that life that you want. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button and make sure you guys subscribe. That's all for today. I'm Hone Tai. Let's multiply.